Nine miles off the Rhode Island coast is Block Island, one of the most spectacular venues for sailing in the world. And it seems the sailors have just as much fun off the water as they do on. <laughs> I wish I had more memories off the water. <laughs> yeah, 10 years ago was my last event here. And uh, yeah, a, a, a lot of fond memories, I believe, but not too many I can remember. Uh, it's tough to say. Uh, they're, they're usually a little foggy. It's late Monday? What day is it? Wednesday. It's like Tuesday night. And we're driving out of the oar on our little dinghy back to the boat we're sleeping on. And uh, someone got creative. Can you see that? So someone took electrical tape and uh, wrote butt and then in front of hustler and then changed the R to a D. And it was, it just for some reason just stuck with me, you know, right in here. Let's see, the other night we got Brad dressed up in a staff shirt and he was kicking people out of the bars. <laughs> I think that was a pretty good one. That'll go on the books for a while. You know, you can go out, you can go downhill biking, that's a lot of fun. Uphill biking is a bit of a or whatever. Uh, the bars and sleeping in bathtubs is sometimes fun. We call that fishing. <laughs> it's a nice little nappy poo there. <laughs> Start out mudslides in the afternoon, maybe Captain Jack's, and end it off with kittens. Everybody's dancing and raging, and Captain Nick's is good for that too. My tactician says it's the most fun you can have with your clothes on. Hi, I'm Tucker Thompson from T2P TV and welcome to day number three of the 25th biannual Block Island Race Week. We're here in the Great Salt Pond about to head back out to the race course and the weather is spectacular. And what a day it is. More breeze at this time of the day than yesterday. The sea breeze filling in. The sun is out. We're going to race. We begin with the Green Fleet and the start of the double-handed division. One boat definitely over early, and you'd have to be impressed with this fleet with only two people sailing the boats. One victim in the over early department, and it is Adrian Little's Flashpoint heading back to restart. That was the gun for cruising non-spinnaker. Bert Keenan's Acadia is leading this division. Here's Blackwatch at the pin using momentum to her advantage. And looking good. The building sea breeze favors the right early on and this last class to start favors the committee boat end and they're off. Scratch that, this is the last class to start. Four boats on the line in perf five. One thing I love is personality in this sport and these guys have it. Just look at the crew shorts on Air Express. Ready, one, two, three. Go get them guys. And clearly the driver of Speedway Boogies on the wrong boat. Clearly one of the biggest boats on this race course would be well out in front. It's Sky, Ralph Worthington and crew. For this fleet, it's a long distance course, one race a day, giving the boats a chance to stretch out their legs. Charles Townsend's Fidelio leads the division. They also get the most beautiful boat award in this fleet. And count those sails. Two spinnakers, one staysail, a main, and a mizzen. The unsung hero in any race boat is the bowman. And here two of them are working on a problem. We're not sure what it is. Maybe the roller furl was jammed up. They're gonna have a few miles to sort it out before the next upwind leg. Now we got three of them in on the job. 
We got it bow committee. There we go, send in the young guy. This is a good point of sale for Acadia. Bert Keenan and crew are leading the cruising non-spinnaker division. R6, the first turning mark here. Tip of the island, just off of the bluffs. And this is where the fleet will head upwind into the sound and into the swells. Off the point, the beautiful Black Watch tacks on to port. More breeze offshore. She is our guest of honor this week. As you all know, she sailed in the first Block Island Race Week in 1965. We have caught up with the historians of this regatta, but midway through this year's Storm Tricell Club Block Island Race Week, we check in with one of the classic boats that was there. Black Watch, the 68-foot classic yawl, designed by Sparkman and Stevens, was already 27 years old in 1965, and a veteran. It actually helped the U.S. Navy as part of the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary Fleet, the Corsair Fleet, who patrolled the oceans and home waters. Upon sighting German U-boats during World War II, they would report back to the Navy to help safeguard our shores. Two towering masts, a hull made of cedar and mahogany, a bronze centerboard, and over 2,000 square feet of sail area see the light of day in 2013 thanks to several New York Yacht Club members who restored her in 2005. Today, she still has an extensive in and offshore schedule, though hopefully now there are no enemy crafts out there to report. And so as the fleet heads offshore, we're going to head down to the White Fleet for the start of race number two. It's the J-44s up first. Well, here's a different look at the art. I've heard of a midline sag before, but this is a giant pin end sag. The boat at the boat end nails the start perfectly and evenly down from him. Each boat is respectively off the line until we get all the way down here with number 11. It's Jeffrey Willis's Challenge 4, currently leading this division by three points over Jim Bishop's Gold Digger. Gold Digger had a bad start, so these guys are happy. With Marlow on the main and a start like that, it's easy to see why Douglas Curtis is winning this division. Wicked 2.0 in front of the J111s. The breeze is picking up and has shifted right a little bit, and the 109s have noticed it crowding the committee boat in before putting their bows down. That was the gun, their East Coast Championship, currently being led by Rick Lyles' Storm. One boat over. They're just one point ahead of Bill Sweetser's Rush, but that's going to help them out. It was Rush who was over early and had to restart. Upwind the breeze is definitely building, and this time it's shifting left near the top of the island with all the J44s on starboard and the 111s on port. In the J44s, Maxine continues to lead her rivals. Now they've all jived on port. And just look at how tight the competition is in the 111. Out in front is Eagles there, Mike Piper, but he's gonna have to work hard to keep three or four boats just behind him from catching his breeze. Speaking of catching breeze, Wicked 2.0 rolls right over Andiamo, both their main and kite luft. They made it hurt. In the J109s at the top mark, Rick Lyle turned a really good start into a great lead as he tacks from the port tack lay line, comfortably in control of the fleet. Whoa, very close port cross, Eclipse crosses Lulu, and the boat in third. Lulu has to two tack it, Damian Emery's, and the lead again, and here are his scores this week. A first, a first, and a first. And he's the division leader, obviously. 
In the J109s, it's Longport Jive favored, and Storm is still in control. Once you're out in front, good crew work won't advance you anymore in the race, but a screw-up can lose you distance. The crew takes no chances and drops the kite early. They're nice and cleaned up here at the right-hand lured gate. Five and 12, we're having a little tussle past the starboard lay line. Now they've jived into the mark. Can 12 keep the overlap? Yes, they've got it, but here's the problem. It's going to be a jive drop with pace to lengths to go to the mark. Can they pull it off? Oh, time is running out for that four deck crew to get it down on shoot. Now, here's the good news. Gut feeling also is going to have a late drop. Kites in the water. Can they recover? Yes. Beautiful job. Wide and tight for the trailing boat. But cut feeling's got the spinnaker halfway down and no jib rolled out. Problem for number number 10, but they'll recover by going well past the lured mark before dropping the kite. A shake up in the J105s, it's shake down. Now out in front of Eclipse here at the lured gates. The breeze has shifted right. The course has been changed in that direction. They're definitely rounding the correct lured gate. And finally into the finish with the J44s and what a race it's been for Maxine. Bill Ketchum and crew currently sitting in third place overall. This will definitely help the scores. And so we've officially eclipsed the halfway point here at Block Island Race Week and now is when an interesting transition begins to occur among the fleet. Those within striking distance of a top level finish will start to focus more on the sailing and those who are not will certainly start to focus more on the festivities here on shore. Either way, it's all part of what adds to the allure of Block Island Race Week. More to come tomorrow. I'm Tucker Thompson from T2P TV.